Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the live, or not so live, Feversham broadcast. We are here at the hallowed playground of Feversham Primary, and we're surrounded by desks and chairs as part of our parent consultations this week, which are being conducted outside. And they are there to for your parents to give you a chance to meet the, meet the teachers. It's been a while and let you know which classes you're going to be in next week, next year. And also if we can help you and support you in any other way during this time. And as always, I'm joined by the, the man himself. Good morning. Mr. Lindley, how are you, sir? I'm fine, sir. How are you? I'm not too bad, sir. Just enjoying the sun. And Mr. Lindley is in his summer dress, <laughs> summer attire. And uh, we have some words of wisdom for us this morning, sir. Yep. So what's on your mind this what's morning, on my sir? mind this morning? Um, logic will get you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. Uh, awesome. So let us, in our usual manner, sir, dissect, unpick, analyse, analyse the, the thought shower of Mr Lindy. So logic will take you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. And what comes to my mind, sir, to start off with, is that logic is just quite boring. You go from A to B, and you don't see anything else, and you're so sure of what you're doing that you miss out everything else that's on offer. Everything that's around you. Everything that's around you. And was it Einstein who said, imagination is more important than knowledge? What's well, certain and he's a, many other things. Yeah, and he was a man that changed the world, didn't he, with his, with his ideas. And most of it came about because of his imagination. And the other thing, sir, uh, is the difference between imagination, wisdom, and logic. And here's uh, something that I heard a long time ago, which really explains this. So knowledge and science and logic tells you that tomato is a fruit. But wisdom tells you not to put it in a fruit salad. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mr. Jeb? Not to put it in a fruit salad. So it's got all the technical definitions of, the, of, uh, of, a, of a fruit, but it's not. So what I'm going to do is, uh, guys, I've, our camera woman is back. We're going to flip the camera and then hopefully we can see. Move yeah, towards, the, you're breaking up. There we are. Okay, sir, so, so there you go, sir. You can use a tomato to explain the difference between knowledge and wisdom. wisdom. And yes. What do you think, Mr. Jeb? I use the analogy all the time. Because Mr. Jeb is a very wise man. That's why. He's a very wise man. That's why. Okay, guys, Mr. Lindley, thank you so much. Is there yeah. anything to... To add, sir, before we move on, I just think it is the saying's more pertinent at the moment because we're in lockdown. It's just saying to Mr. Idris, try putting your phone down or your screen down for five minutes and just imagine you're somewhere else. It's Absolutely, just I use all your senses, not just these. And I think this is we, you know, we were having a chat before the how important imagination is the difference between a book and a film. So sometimes when you watch a film and you think, wow, the book was so much better. And you think, why, why is that? Why is the book so much better than a film? What's that happened to you, sir? I think all the time, sir. I said in last week's staff meeting when I did my book review, the books are always better than the film because it's your imagination, it's your take on the story. Whereas when you're watching the film, you're watching somebody else's take on the story. And so you're kind of passive yeah. and you've taken somebody else's imagination and thought process and you've not made the connections in your mind yourself. So, so it's always better to kind of better. So, so guys, if you're going to take one thing from this message today, and it's this, that use your imagination, limit the screen time and read a book and use your own interpretation. So thank you very much, Linda. Thank you very much. So we have some children ready for us today in year one so we're gonna if you follow us miss just outside here we have some fantastic year one children who come into school and who are in a bubble 
Good morning, how are you? Are you guys okay? So, Miss Robinson, what are we doing this morning with year one? So we've been building houses out of cardboard boxes. Wow. And um, we're just going to finish those this afternoon. And this morning we've been doing some writing about our own home. Thanks, well, you know and, what? And ice lollies. And you've been having ice lollies? This afternoon, if they're good. Oh, that is amazing. Do you know what, Miss? I think, look how happy this child is. Look at the smile yeah. on his face. So happy to be in school. Okay, Me guys. Too. And Guys, we've said this before, if you'd like to come to school, talk to your class teachers, talk to the office, and we have a bit of capacity to take some children in, but you must let your teacher or the office know. So guys, are you having fun? Yes! Yeah. 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 You know what a glorious day for today, isn't it? Apple. Yeah. The apple is the best, isn't it? An apple a day keeps the teacher happy as well. Yeah. <laughs> and the doctor away. And the doctor Definitely away. keeps Marion happy. Marion happy. Look, look at Marian's muscles. Whoa, Marian, that's amazing. And it's all down to the healthy eating that you're doing. Well done. Well done, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you very much. So, I think that's all from the, the live broadcast. Uh, there are some contributions from Miss Yates on the art. And there was one of the contributions. Sheila Miss and Science. And Mr. Science. Science. Miss Thomas was going to do some science contributions as well. So, guys, all I've got to say is keep safe. The sun is out. If you are outside, make sure you use some sun cream and keep yourself protected. And if you would like to come into school, let your class teachers and let the office know. So, from myself and Mr. Lindley, goodbye till next time. And we shall see you all next week. Bye. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome. Good morning everybody. Today I'm going to share with you the ideas of a time capsule. What is a time capsule? Have you ever heard about one? It's what people do. They collect lots of things associated with what is happening at the moment, in the today, in the present. And this could be recipes, this could be stories, this could be Eid cards, this could be uh, poems, photographs, drawings, conversations, lots and lots of different things. Because at the moment we are living through extraordinary times. It's a historic event. And we at Feversham want to capture the essence of this exciting and interesting and a little bit scary at times event. So. What is a time capsule? A time capsule is um, a small box or a tube. Uh, it's just a, a container where you put in things that have collect you've collected that reflect what you have been doing these last few months. So these are a few things that I've got together which you can help you formulate your ideas. So I've been doing lots of drawing, so I've been using lots of pencils and as you can see these have now all worn out. So these are really really short and very difficult to draw with now. So I'm going to put these into my time capsule. So they're the first things I'm going to put in boys and girls. Um, I came into school last Thursday to do some recording of the year six students and Anna she gave me this, she made this for me. This is an absolute must to go into my time capsule because it's amazing. A nice piece of paper engineering there. Thank you, Anna, I really appreciate that. Well done. I've been knitting on Thursday with Mrs. Khan, the funky knitters, and this is some of the wool that I've been using. So I'll put this into my time capsule and I'll also explain why I've put it in. So this belongs to my knitting, from Thursday, uh, the Funky Knitters, who was there, and I explain what I made. Okay, uh, something else I'm going to pop into my time capsule is a message from my friend. Um, this is some fabric that I finished sewing. With. with each of these items, these objects that I put in, I'll write around it and say, well, this is what I made. This is, I made a cushion from this fabric. Um, and actually this fabric came from Turkey nice and shiny fabric 
um, here I'm going to put in this greetings card, this thank you card that I got from the little girl who lives next door. Okay, she's only in reception, so she, I gave her some materials to make some things, and she then made me that card, which I really do appreciate. Um, I've also made a face mask, which is reflects the time at the moment. So I'll put those into my time capsule, seal it all up. Usually what happens is they get buried in the ground with a notice and this notice would say do not open to a specific date. We could set it for a hundred years and what would happen is that would stay buried and in a hundred years time some little boys and girls just like yourselves would come along, open the capsule and all your objects that you have collected to show what was happening today, this historic event, would be opened and they would be able to say, oh my gosh, is that what they were doing? How interesting. And it would really spark their imaginations. So let's make a time capsule together. Let Feversham put our objects into a time capsule with our writing, with our poems, with our conversations for the future to open and find out. Thank you very much. Good morning Feversham scientists. Our topic this week is all about time and my challenge to you is to try and make a clock that can measure exactly one minute. Now, before we had clocks and watches as we know them today, things that we wear on our wrist or have on our phone, people used to tell the time in different ways. They used to use the sun. We know that the sun appears to move across the sky every day. So people used to look where the sun was in the sky and make a rough guess about what the time was. They used to use the sun to make sundials, which were a little bit more accurate. They would also use candles that were marked and they would burn them down and see what time it was from where the, where the flame was. They would also make sand clocks and that's what we're going to try to do today to help you make something that can time exactly a minute. Now to do this you will need an old plastic bag, an elastic band or a hair tie, a jam jar, a glass, a yoghurt pot, anything that will hold some powder, a pair of scissors and some sand or if you haven't got any sand because I haven't got any at home, some salt. The first thing you do is cut out a square of plastic just big enough to fit over the top of your jar. Then you need to make a hole in the middle of the plastic. I used a sharp pencil for this. Look, you can just see the pencil coming through the hole. Then you need to put some of your salt or sand into your jar. Then using the elastic band, fix the plastic over the jar so it doesn't come off. Then using a stopwatch or a timer or your clock or something on a phone, See how long it takes for all the salt or sand to come out of your jar. Keep going until it's all gone. So how long did it take? Did it take more than a minute? Less than a minute? How could you change your clock? so that it took exactly one minute for all the salt or sand to come out. Could you put more sand in? Put less in? Could you make the hole bigger or smaller? I want you to investigate and find a clock that can time exactly a minute. And when you've done it, you can use it to see how many star jumps you could do in a minute. See how far backwards you can run in a minute. You would have made a one minute timer. If you want to, make another one that times five minutes.
Hello everyone. This week our topic is all about homes and I'm going to try and show you today how some shapes are stronger than others. You will need three pieces of paper all exactly the same size. The first piece, fold it into half and then fold each half into half again. Then stand up and take the two ends together so you make a square shape, a square prism. The second piece fold into three, fold it into the middle, fold it again. And this time again, put two pieces of tape on the edges. And you've got a triangle. The third piece is much easier. All you do is bend it round without folding a little bit of tape at each ends, so you have a circle. Then you need to find something that you can put on top of each tower. I'm using table mats. Good morning Feversham scientists. Our topic this week is all about time and my challenge to you is to try and make a clock that can measure exactly one minute. Now before we had clocks and watches as we know them today, things that we wear on our wrist or have on our phone, people used to tell the time in different ways. They used to use the sun we know that the sun appears to move across the sky every day. So people used to look where the sun was in the sky and make a rough guess about what the time was. They used to use the sun to make sundials, which were a little bit more accurate. They would also use candles that were marked and they would burn them down and see what time it was from where the, where the flame was. They would also make sand clocks and that's what we're going to try to do today to help you make something that can time exactly a minute. Now to do this you will need an old plastic bag, an elastic band or a hair tie, a jam jar, a glass, a yoghurt pot, anything that will hold some powder, a pair of scissors and some sand, or if you haven't got any sand, because I haven't got any at home, some salt. The first thing you do is cut out a square of plastic, just big enough to fit over the top of your jar. Then you need to make a hole in the middle of the plastic. I used a sharp pencil for this. Look, you can just see the pencil coming through the hole. Then you need to put some of your salt or sand into your jar. Then using the elastic band, fix the plastic over the jar so it doesn't come off. Then using a stopwatch or a timer or your clock or something on a phone, see how long it takes for all the salt or sand to come out of your jar. Keep going until it's all gone. So how long did it take? Did it take more than a minute? Less than a minute? 
How could you change your clock so that it took exactly one minute for all the salt or sand to come out? Could you put more sand in? Put less in? Could you make the hole bigger or smaller? I want you to investigate and find a clock that can time exactly a minute. And when you've done it, you can use it to see how many star jumps you could do in a minute. See how far backwards you can run in a minute. You would have made a one minute timer. If you want to, make another one that times five minutes. Thank you.